for you already in the name of Jesus Christ may the grace that lifts may the grace that announces let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now you are welcome to believers global TV beloved in Christ I implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to it is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching and that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. We'll look at three scriptures and then I'll begin my teaching. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're reading the whole chapter. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Next verse. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the window be darkened, verse 4, and the doors shall be shut in the streets, and the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Five. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the street. Verse six. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity upon vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written, that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Verse 11. The words of the wise are as gods, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd and further by this my son be admonished pay attention now of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness of the flesh 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man last verse for god shall bring every walk into judgment which with every secret thing whether it be good or it be evil the lord help us in the name of jesus next verse Proverbs chapter 30, we'll read from verse 14, 15, and 16. Proverbs chapter 30, we'll read 14, 15, and 16. Are you still here? There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men the horse leech had two daughters crying give give there are three things that are never satisfied yea 
four things say not it is enough what are they number one the grave never says enough number two the barren womb never says enough number three the earth that is not filled with water never says enough and number four the fire that saith not it is enough father help us and give us understanding in the name of jesus christ the assignment of a man of god is to bring god's people into different dimensions of spiritual intelligence in a house like this um, we are mandated to ensure that believers are taught the various facets of kingdom living the first being the knowledge of god and the knowledge of the things that pertain unto god the next being understanding the mysteries of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom that make for an excelling life the principles that make for empowerment the principles that make for results because there is an expression of effective living that comes as the power of personal results but then in the midst of all these dimensions and all these pursuits it is also important to every once in a while bring in superior wisdom that helps people to manage their lives effectively and that would help people to live lives of meaning, lives of purpose, lives that at the end of it they would not regret and wonder, what have I lived my life for? Hallelujah. The subject of purpose is one that um, the body of Christ is not in confusion or in ignorance over pulpit after pulpit book after book different people have taught on the subject of purpose and destiny i remember many years ago listening to a very powerful message by dr miles munro he preached that message in south africa and he spoke about five questions that every man must ask himself i may not remember the whole of the questions what i remember question number one is who am i i remember him saying every man born of a woman must within his lifetime be able to answer that question who am i i only remember the first and the last question i may not remember the other three there are five in all the last question is where am i going to who am i and then where am i headed for when i wake up in the morning what is the objective behind my pursuit my drive and all of these things in school of ministry there is one of our courses called personal transformation and i teach there about the graph of life helping men to understand to the brevity of life and how to live effectively and i've done a few teachings along that line um i think if i were not a preacher and if i were not a christian i probably would have been a philosopher i love to think intuitively to think and, and look at life um from a logical standpoint and from a standpoint of value what is life about why do we wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night I have the privilege of traveling a lot because of my schedules and my ministrations and there are cities i travel to in this nation and even around the world i am surprised that people don't sleep at any time you go to that city someone is moving and driving and laughing and selling and smiling in fact there are regions where the moment it is night that's why that's when other people wake up there's music playing, people are enjoying themselves, restaurants are warming or cooking food afresh, not even warming one that they had. No, all kinds of things. There are regions you go and you hear someone shout in the middle of the night, calling passengers, and they are coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I have seen a bit of the, the interesting thing in life. I have seen people wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night i've seen people aspire for so many things 
by reason of what I do, I'm always praying for people who tr are trusting God for, you know, new heights, new levels, new dimensions in life, whether it is financially, whether it is in government and politics, academics, and all of that. And I am amazed at how our needs do not seem to end. So you meet a young boy in, say, secondary school, and the need of that person and his desire, his craving, his prayer, and even his frustration comes from the desire to probably finish secondary school, write his exams, pass jam, and you see the gentleman depressed and you tell him, what is the source of this depression? And he says, this jam, I want to pass it. Now you ask one who is already in the higher institution of learning and his desire is to pass his exams, defend his project, and graduate and then the one who graduates will tell you i want to go further i'm trying to secure a scholarship to go for masters or phd and all of that and you ask a young man he will tell you my desire now is to marry her desire now is to marry you ask the one who is married they tell you the devil is a liar i must have children <laughs> are we together then the one who has children, their desires change and they tell you, thank God for girls, but I think we need to add boys to this list. And the, dep the same depression the person had when he was small has been changing or remaining the same using different, different needs. And then you ask the one who um, is staying with his parents and his desire and frustration is, I'm no longer a child. I need to get out of this house. Then he gets out and smuggles himself to a small room. And after a while, his desire is to have a bigger house. Then he gets tired of being a tenant. And he will tell you, my new desire, the source of this, my frustration and wrinkling my face is that I want to start building. You ask the one who now has children and their desire is to have these children grow and become responsible. 10, 11 years later, same frustration. But now the basis for that frustration is I didn't realize having so many children would require so much money for fees. That becomes another journey. Later you ask them and they say, I can't imagine that I suffered and went through this only to give birth to a foolish child. This child is 18 years old and I almost regret giving birth to this child. And remember, the same person, look at all the various transitions, same frustration. Then you ask the one who gets a job and is happy, gives testimony six months later. He's saying, I don't understand this. What kind of failure is this? Um, I, I didn't offend anybody. This is an office. I rejoice. It came by prophecy. I need promotion. Same frustration. Hmm. Pay attention. And then you find one who has gotten the job and the promotion. Now the promotion causes trouble between the couple. Because now their salaries are similar and it looks like the man is saying, So now that God has lifted you, another frustration that has come as a result of that lifting. And then the frustration will soon change when they go to the hospital. And they say, it looks like there is a lump or a growth in your body. How old are you? I'm 55. Was suspecting prostrate. All of a sudden, the prostration that was there when he was young now returns, but a different reason is the sponsor. So I'm going to die. You would think that with all of the achievements, the frustrations should diminish. You would go to the house of a very wealthy man and turn left and right and see everything you desire and aspire for and yet that man is still looking for something and you're asking what are you still looking for and the man will say something like i can give up all these things you see for what i am looking for and he's still frustrated remember when he made his first million remember when he made his first billion he thought it would give him that peace and satisfaction and even in the midst of plenty. Remember the first time the man boarded a flight. Coming from a background of penury and poverty. He was happy and smiling. Now he may probably have his own private charter or his private jet. And in the midst of it, there is still that frustration. 
How about those who hang and write letters with billions piled in their accounts and shoot themselves or hang themselves as painful as death is that a state can come in a man's life where it seems better to die than to live? Are we still together? How about a young preacher on campus catching the fire, praying for eight hours, praying for nine hours, learning about Greek and Hebrew as a new experience, and my goodness, this gentleman is now beginning to step into some kind of dimension of grace. Now they invite him for small fellowships, and the power of God is moving. This young man is rediscovering a whole new world about his destiny. Happy and excited for a while. Then campus days are over. Then he desires to start ministry. Another frustration comes. Where do I get venue? Where do I get money? And then he starts ministry. 30 years later, he's angry, frustrated, looks back, and he does not even know whether he was called or not. What are we really looking for? Please, I want you to listen to this message. The Lord put it in my heart to share. For the terrorists, or one who would stand and kill people and rob a bank and rob people, what are they really looking for? For the preacher who has a large congregation and yet continues to pray and say, God, give me increase, what are we really looking for? For the one who has successful children, all graduates, all successful, all working, and they still have prayer requests. What are they looking for? The one who just made his first billion in dollars and is still looking for something. Still submitting proposals from state to state, nation to nation, region to region, fighting and arguing over wars, fighting and arguing over um, contracts. What is he looking for? For the man of God who has been in the faith, working with God for 40 years, and he's still fasting and praying, what is he looking for? For one who has seen the power of God move in his life in uncommon, unimaginable dimensions, what is he looking for? You will thank me for the message that you are hearing tonight. This message will give your life meaning. It will give your life perspective and indeed it will give you peace. Are we learning? The Bible says there are four that never say enough. It is not within their, there is nothing, they never attain any state where they can say, I have had enough. I've had the honor and the privilege of studying very successful people and successful systems. I didn't want to be a failure myself. I hate failure. Hallelujah. And I knew that for you to succeed in life, you would need knowledge and indeed a lot of it. And so I submitted myself to learning. I still do. And I'm humbled by the things that I've learned through the years from books, from men, from materials, and even from my own experiences. I used to think that the greatest tragedy in life was failure. That the worst that can happen to a man in life is that that man fails. Fails to achieve his or her dreams. But I would soon discover that there is another tragedy that is greater than failure. And it's not death. This discussion is not about those who are dead. This discussion is about those who are alive. What is worse than failure? I will tell you. There is one thing that is worse than failure. It's called success without fulfillment. That success without fulfillment would bring a greater sting, a greater frustration than even failure. It is possible for a man to be successful and never be fulfilled. In my studies and my learning about God and learning about systems, learning about principles 
of posterity principles of um, stability in the lives of people and in organizations, I have found out that the subject of fulfillment is one that many people have downplayed to their detriment. There are many, many, many people today who are victims of the absence of fulfillment, even though successful. The greater tragedy, greater than failure, is a life of success that does not have fulfillment. In Genesis chapter 37, when you read from verse 15, the Bible talks about Joseph. I just want to borrow a concept there and then I'll begin my teaching. That Joseph was sent to go and look for his brothers. And the Bible says, And a certain man found him, the him being Joseph now. And behold, the Bible says, He was wandering in the field. Wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? He saw him wandering. Who is this young man? very visionary but you are wandering in frustration it seems to me your body language and your action suggests to me that you are looking for something i see your determination i see your press it seems you're going back and forth you're waking up in the morning i see you're going to have a master's you're going to have a phd i see you're attending conferences and trainings they suggest to me that whilst you are wandering around there is something you are looking for the question is, what seekest thou? What are you looking for? That has made you travel to U.S. for trainings. Travel to Canada for trainings. That even in old age, you are not ashamed to go back to school again. What seekest thou? What is that that you are looking for? That makes you to hate and detest failure so much. Books upon books. You have a library that is full of them. And anything that looks like useful information, you are like a sponge absorbing anything that seems to propose a greater life. Please keep that scripture there. 37, 15. A certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him a simple question. What seekest? As simple as this question is, ladies and gentlemen, you can spend your entire life trying to search for the answer. You would think you have found the answer and 10 years added to your life, you would discover what you found was not really the answer. Many people have gone to their graves unable to answer this question. What are you looking for? What is that which motivates you? Why are you doing the things that you are doing? There are people who retire, respectfully speaking, from service. And they cry and beg and say, retain me again. Even though the company and the organization is saying, you've tried, you've served for 30, 35 years. Go and rest. They say, no, I don't want to rest. What seekers thou? When a patient runs around looking for a doctor, traveling from nation to nation, what seekest thou? Write this down, please. Understanding the subject of fulfillment. Understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth. Understanding the subject of fulfillment is one of the pillars for living an effective life on earth. Hallelujah. I took out time to learn the subject of fulfillment because I do not want to live a useless life. In as much as you love me, in as much as you believe that I am a man of God, sent from God, in as much as you have been blessed by the privilege of the investment of grace upon my life, do you know it is possible to live a life impacting people whilst you are frustrated? Do you agree with me on that? There have been many people on earth, in the secular and even in church, 
who kill themselves in the presence of overwhelming impact. Traveling from pillar to post, blessing people. While everybody is calling you a blessing, you are dying in total frustration. In fact, I will tell you this. Psychologists will tell you that some of the people who are perceived to be the most successful people are about the most frustrated people. They live lonely lives. They are on drugs. They have to live off therapy after therapy. And you are surprised. You go to their offices and you see awards day and night. And yet those people can wake up one morning and literally die of frustration. It means there is something that if we do not understand, we stand a risk of living a life that is extremely successful. But and in the midst of our success, we find out that we live defeated lives that do not count as far as fulfillment is concerned. For someone shout no way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've met very old people. I like to see elderly people, especially those who have done something notable. I believe they have profound wisdom and I can learn from them. And I will tell you the truth. A number of them, even in old age, in the course of our discussion, have been very open to tell me, Apostle, I did this, I, that, I did that, I traveled here, I traveled there. Some of them preachers, some of them business people. And they would tell me that there was still a longing in their hearts. That they felt like they did not do enough. What is fulfillment? Please write this down. I define... Fulfillment as the satisfaction, please write it, I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively. The fulfillment, the satisfaction and the joy, you may want to add, the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. Fulfillment is the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. It's called fulfillment. Now, I want you to tighten your seatbelt and sit quietly as I teach you something that I truly believe will revolutionize your life. I have taught a bit on it here, um, but then I want to teach this in detail. It was a miracle and it was a deliverance to my own life from living a life that was futile, filled with only success without fulfillment. I want to live a life that is both successful and a life that is fulfilled by every standard. Are you ready? Now, there are six fundamental human needs. Write it down, please. There are six fundamental human cravings. They are more than needs. They are desperate cravings that every man, provided you are alive, it is the craving that defines the motivation that drives everything that you do in your life. Whether from a spiritual context, whether from an economic context, whether from a sociological context, all of us as the human species are driven essentially by these six needs, but believe me, they are more than needs. They are cravings that literally your sense of fulfillment from a human standpoint depends on your having these cravings satisfied that if at any point in your life these cravings are not met and represented in your life it will only spell utter frustration no matter what line of work or career whether you are a preacher an apostle a prophet a businessman an academician a family man young old male female educated uneducated black white it does not matter this 
is a reality that is common to us all. Six fundamental human cravings, human needs. Are you ready? Please write them down. Number one, the need for security. Please write it down. Every human born of a woman has this craving from within them. The need to feel secured, physically secured, emotionally secured. Now, these needs vary based on gender, based on age, based on levels of exposure, but ultimately, all of us have the same need. It is just the various degrees of these needs that now define what we call our personality. Security. Men will give up anything to feel secured, even if they are not secured. Sadly and unfortunately, we've had several things happen across Kaduna. For those of you who are in Nigeria here, the mayhem that was unleashed on people, it's unfortunate, it's been quite a tragic two weeks, especially for that region. And you can imagine, so everyone within that region would crave for security. And the moment you see a military man wearing a uniform, you are happy to see that person. Is that true? Because that person represents security. Number two, the second human craving is the need for variety or dynamism. Please write it down. Variety or dynamism. This is the reason why anything that is new, especially in the mass media cells, because we like to know what is the breaking news, what is the new information. People hate boredom. It's not, it's not given to the human species to endure boredom indefinitely. People like things that create variety. That's why people find special moments and celebrate them. That's why you do not wear the same color of cloth every day, for instance. That is the reason why you, you are tired of a house that you've been living in and you will want to move to another house. It's a craving for variety. Companies based on this awareness reinvent their products, reinvent the packaging of their products, and just by reinventing the packaging of their products can rise to millions of dollars and billions of dollars simply because they satisfy this craving for variety. Same product, they don't have to change anything as far as the product is concerned, but they gave it a presentation that was new and appealing. Are we together? Number three, the third craving that is in every human being is the need for significance. Write it down, please. This is a very serious one, especially to men. Significance. The concept of respect, as we know, the concept of honor, we know, that is embedded in most of the masculine gender, if not all, came from the need for significance. When you bow down and you greet me and say, Good afternoon, sir. Why am I excited as you're bowing down? When you kneel down and say, Good afternoon, ma. It, is, it gives people a perception of significance. Are we together now? People crave for significance. They crave for it more than you can ever know. Preachers, parents, young people, business people, men, women, everyone. Significance. People crave for respect. People crave for honor. And people crave for acknowledgement. You know what acknowledgement is? To make sure you are aware of the extent of the worth of that individual. And that you can attest to the fact that that individual is that valuable. It's called acknowledgement. People can go to any length to be acknowledged. Businessmen, pastors, politicians have become act enemies for decades simply because someone's pedigree was downplayed by not being acknowledged. Or not acknowledged properly. Are we together? If I sit on any of these beautiful seats or I sit on the ground 
or I sit on any white chair anywhere, what difference does it make in terms of um, in terms of my physical person? It may not necessarily make any difference, but it seems to communicate a sense of significance, a sense of acknowledgement, a sense of respect, a sense of honor, and you can't believe how people crave for it. In every occasion, there is something called high table. High table. It's still table. High. Now, what is the difference between those who sit there and those who sit everywhere else? They can even eat the same thing. In every flight, there's what is called first class, there's what is called business class and economy. These are various names that were invented to help manage and communicate the idea of significance. Are we together? You go to certain places and say, this is a priority route, this is a regular route, all these names, VVIP, uh, VIP, you know, and all of these things, they are all, they are all various attempts. Please pay attention to what I'm teaching you. Significance. You cannot imagine the degree to which you crave for significance. It's a craving that many people, it would take a lot of enlightenment to even be aware of the extent to which you need it. Number four. Are you ready for the fourth? The fourth craving, desperate craving of all humans is love and acceptance. The need to be accepted. Please underline that word acceptance. The opposite of acceptance is rejection. And go and ask any psychologist and any man of God who is serious with God. And they can tell you the, the, the severe consequences of being in a position of rejection. Are we together? Love and acceptance. Please look up. Why do you think most people join occult groups? I can tell you, go and ask most of these young people while in secondary school now, unfortunately, I don't mean called like village, but called groups, the one that, you know, these guys that move around. And you ask them what, what they are looking for. They will tell you, I came from a family where nobody believed in me, nobody accepted me, and here is this group and they told me if they can scar my body and do all kinds of things i will be accepted and they will endure such pain provided it will provide acceptance hallelujah people crave for love and people crave for acceptance people have cried because doors were shut at them they were not accepted. People have cried because they did not give them employment. It was not about the employment or lack of it, but that it was communicated in a way that shows that you are rejected and they go back feeling things that have no business with that job. So is this how my life is going to be? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. There are sincere men and women who come seeking counseling from psychologists, seeking counseling from men and women of God. And they say, look, I think I'm a beautiful lady. I think I'm a handsome man. And look at my life. Nobody has ever said good morning. Nobody has ever said good afternoon. What is making them feel that bad? The sense, a longing for acceptance and the pain of rejection. Is someone learning? Number five. What is the fifth craving? of all human beings growth and increase people crave to grow people crave desperately to grow every parent wants to see their child or their children grow every child wants to grow to become an adult um, parents many of you would see children a young child who started walking and doing all kinds of things and if the mother should leave her dressing space to that child, one day the child is going to surprise her. You will come and you see the child trying to put eyelashes, trying to put all kinds of things. The child is insisting and say, I can't wait for 18 years. It's too long or 15 years or whatever. Let me make my attempt now. And the child will paint himself into all kinds of things. 
the need and the instinct for growth. How about teenagers? You flog them and say, be patient until you are 18 before you start driving. The same car, they will be tired and pack it one day. But they will fight once they are 17, 16. That you will have to flog them, advise them, make them quote scriptures to stay in one place and wait for just one more year before they start driving. The need for growth. The need for growth. The need for growth. Especially in Africa. Most people hate being called children. When, except it's a very old man who says you're a child. But anybody who is maybe just a few years older than you, if he calls you a child, say, look, you are older than me, but don't you dare call me a child. I'm not a child. Because there is something about our passion for growth. Even children now say, don't call me a child. What are you? I'm not an adult, but I'm not a child anyway. <laughs> Everybody say growth. When someone holds a master's certificate or a PhD or another certification somewhere, why are they happy to celebrate those milestones? It gives them a perception of growth. Luke 2 and verse 52. Even in fact, when you read from verse 49 to 52, Jesus himself passionate about growth the bible does not leave us in the dark he went as a teenager the bible says he was at the temple learning building his mind satisfying that need and that craving for growth and the father and the mother joseph and mary went around looking for him when they found him at the temple he said unto them how is it that ye sought for me wish not that i must be about my father's business Verse 50, the Bible says, And they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. 51, And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these things in her heart. 52, popular scripture. And Jesus increased. Say increased. In wisdom, he increased in stature. Physically, he increased in favor with God and with men. Everybody say growth. Growth is very powerful. I do not know anybody, no matter how critical, who does not celebrate any major milestone in his life. People celebrate birthdays. People celebrate anniversaries. Why? Because it culminates to growth. As a man of God, if you have ten members and God brings five more, you are careful to celebrate and say, thank God for this. The concept of ingathering has come to stay in the body of Christ. Yes, because we want souls saved. But in truth, in addition to that, it is the instinct for growth. Everything that is alive grows. Now, not to get you offended, there are children who have medical conditions that impede their growth in one area or the other, or their overall stature. You find out that you can see a child who is three years old, four years old, and then maybe because of some deformity or some, you know, health issue, the child cannot grow properly. It is a concern to any responsible parent. Is that true? How many of you have seen children, again, respectfully, who um, maybe they had to repeat certain classes, maybe primary one, primary two, and the child is there for three years, four years, and you find out that people come and say, what kind of a child are you? You will now say, your colleagues are in primary five or something, and you are still here. And the child feels bad because the child wants to increase. The child wants to grow. So number one, security. Number two, variety and or dynamism. Number three, significance, acknowledgement. Number four, love and acceptance. Number five, growth and increase. Are you ready for the last? Number six, impact and contribution. The sixth craving in all humans, regardless who, is the craving to know that your life is counting. That you are living an impactful life and you are contributing towards a cause. Let me tell you this. This sixth craving is so serious. This is one of the root causes of um, violence that is accelerated in many 
underdeveloped nations because most young people are they want to be part of a cause part of something and because they are idle there's nothing the moment they see that there is something that catches the attention of media everybody wants to be part of it whether it is election whether it is whatever it is they want to be part of anything happening that there is that that dopamine feeling of relevance that feeling of knowing that i'm doing something my life is counting for something Hallelujah. There is nobody who does not want his life to count. I can tell you this. In all of the messages and all of this that people send, the most touching for me is Apostle, thank you. I listened to your teaching. It changed my life. Now I love the Lord more. Now I'm passionate uh, about the things of the kingdom or your teaching has brought me knowledge. You know why it gives me joy? Yes, Jesus is glorified, but it gives me joy because I can, through that text message, it can give me a basis to say, thank God my life is counting. There is nobody who wants to live as a non-entity to know that your life is not counting. How many people have resigned from jobs because they felt that they were being underutilized? They felt there's nothing I'm doing here. I think I'm worth more in terms of impact than this. It's not about the salary. I'm not doing anything. I just sit down and sign documents. Whether I come to work or not, my salary is there. I don't think I am productive, they say. But what is really driving them is the fact that they want their lives to count. When we acknowledge people, we begin to list some of the things they have done that has blessed us. So, 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 and so, man, he has blessed me. He's changed my life as a businessman. He's mentored me as a lecturer, as a man of God. And you see the people rejoice and give glory to God. But then you can see that fulfillment because their lives count. Now, I will tell you why I listed all of these things. All that we seek for, all that we look for, all that we work for, all that we pray for is hidden in these six things. Believe me when I tell you, every single one prayer request written here during the miracle service, every single desire that brought you to the house of God, no matter how you want to twist it spiritual, from a psychological standpoint is an attempt to draw into your life one of these six cravings let me repeat myself all that we seek for all that we look for all that we fight for all that we work for and all that we pray for is hidden in these six psychological needs this is very powerful. Write this down, please. Nothing physical. This is a sad news, but it's also a deliverance for someone now. Nothing physical or material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. Nothing physical or material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. What a deliverance, what a deliverance, what a deliverance. That nothing physical or nothing material in itself can ever give you fulfillment. Back to my illustration when I started teaching. Remember the young boy? Remember the married man? Remember the career person? Remember the old man? No wonder in spite of their various levels of achievements one thing that still remains in their life is the need for fulfillment as a young boy as a student as a graduate as a married man as a father as a grandfather as a career person as an expert as a poor person as a millionaire as a billionaire as an enlightened person as a successful man of god the same thread runs through all of these people. A craving that many do not understand. So, watch this. We invented various ways of trying to fulfill this craving. I can tell you, that is the principal cause of frustration in today's world. 
Is God speaking to someone? The principal cause of frustration. Many people live lives that are frustrated today. And you will ask them what they are looking for. And they cannot really articulate what is driving them. What are they looking for? They think they are looking for a car. They think they are looking for a house or a bigger house. They think they are looking for a husband or a wife. They think they are looking for twins or triplets. Please listen very carefully. Believe me when I tell you nothing physical and nothing material has been authorized by God to give anybody fulfillment. None of it has the power to give you fulfillment. Wow. Not your certificate, not your marriage, not your children, not the cars you buy, not the titles. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying these things are not useful. But I'm interpreting for you the thing you are really looking for. You think it is a car that you are looking for. I'm giving you an advance notice. You will find that car and only rejoice for a very short time. That's why we enjoy things that are new. And then they stop giving us fulfillment. Remember when you bought the SUV, you smiled and gave God glory, danced around it and snapped it. It's in your house, but you wanted it to be within your sight. Four months later on, it's not fixed and you don't care. What changed? You found out that it did not have the ability. You thought it deceived you. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present and wrong. You're the holder of my future days to come. This is very powerful. For who is like you, Lord, and all the earth? Much less love you, endless words. Hallelujah. Man of God, I know you think what you are looking for is more members. You are sincere. But that is not what you are looking for. What seekest thou? My dear sister, I know you are trusting God to have children. It is your obsession and it is your prayer. Lord, if only you will give me children and take away this shame. You are sincere. But let me announce to you in advance. That is truly not what you are looking for. You are only looking for it because you suspect there is something in it. I'm going behind your physical desires to tell you what you are really looking for. Can I tell you, not knowing this is the reason why, respectfully speaking, many homes are broken and scattered. The man is saying, I hate you. Every time you fight anybody in your life, let me tell you what you are fighting. I don't care what is the subject matter. What you are really fighting is a violation of these things. You hate people to the degree to which they violate your agenda to having one or more of these six. So when the woman looks at the man and says, you are a stupid man. I regret marrying you. You are a devil from the pit of hell. Shift all that English. What is she saying? You have robbed me of, of an opportunity to feel secured. You have robbed me of an opportunity to feel significant. You have robbed me of an opportunity to feel accepted. You have pegged and limited growth in my life. It is a, all of our English is just a way of trying to express this cry. When a man of God is frustrated and says, Lord, anoint me. What is he saying? Lord, give me what will take away shame from my life, he's saying. Now, he thinks he just wants soul saved. And he's right. But why does he need the anointing? That he will lock up himself for 40 days. What does the anointing do to him? He knows that when the anointing is there, the sick will be healed. Oppressed people will be delivered. And inevitably, 
the Lord himself will increase his influence. So he would have significance. He would have acceptance. Are you seeing now? When you buy a car, why do you rejoice? I will tell you. You are too smart to rejoice over a metal. It is not the metal that is giving you joy. You think it is the car that is giving you joy. That car is spelling something to your psychology. Significance. That car may make a group now finally accept you. What you are really looking for is not a car. I bring you an interpretation so that we'll find rest from this endless mundane pursuit. Most people don't know what they are looking for. Remember, what seekest thou? Because the professor finds out that he's still frustrated like the one who just has SSC. The married man is still frustrated as the unmarried man. The barren woman is still frustrated as the person with eight children. The billionaire is still frustrated as the one whose business has died. So what are you really looking for? Nigeria lost at the stadium. Now, I'm not, I'm not a footballer. I'm a patriotic citizen. Why did people get angry? People cried like they lost loved ones. What did they really lose? Yes, thank God for all of the name. But to you, what hurt you so bad that you lost your appetite? Was it really the ball? Do you like a round object that much? No. You were hoping that that result will help to give you a little dopamine feeling that you are in an environment that works. And since it did not happen, it reinforced again the fact that you might truly be a failure. When people are getting married, why do they cry that they don't have money? Is money a condition really for marriage? Everything is in place. No cake, no suit, and they are crying. The priest is there. Your parents are there. Why are you really crying? I will tell you. Because that is a moment in a lifetime where you can rub off your significance and force anybody who has looked down on you to know that this is a day that is exclusively to me. And now finances wants to bust your tire and you are angry and say, no, the devil is a liar. It will lead you to pray. It will lead you to fast. No. If you receive a transfer of 100 million naira. Now listen, listen. Say amen. Why did you say amen? Listen. If I had said, if you sow a seed of one million naira, you will not fight me because sowing is spiritual. But you will not say amen for that kind of prayer. Especially if you know you really have that kind of money. Lest God turns it into a, an instruction and says you should give that money true, true. Now, but I said you would receive a hundred million naira. Now watch this. Let's examine it. What is a hundred million naira? A figure written online that you can read or a piece of paper no they represent something that seem to draw a line through the psychological needs from security to variety to acceptance are we together to significance that is why you really want the money when you get a good job why do you suddenly the person you were saying yes sir you don't feel a need to say yes sir again and you are not afraid what changed We use different terminologies in our world. Level has changed. You are, um, uh, you know, all those kinds of things. You know it, but I'm telling you that, listen, that's what you are looking for. Why are you angry when people forget your birthday? Did they kill you? Did they blackmail you? So why are you angry? over something that happens in just 24 hours why do you take it personal that after 10 years you are still angry and you transfer that anger to the children this thing is very serious because there are many of us 
who they gave birth to us in the midst of two people's heads being joined together. You don't even know the story. You just know that you arrived and met fire from both sides. What is the cause of this hatred between my fam- father or my family? Or, and you don't know. And trace all of that trouble. It is one of these six things. I will never forgive you till Jesus comes. What you are trying to say is, you did something that gave me a perception that was against my desire for any of these six things. Now, when you look at me and you say, Apostle, you are a good man, I like you. What are you saying? You are saying either through your life or through your teachings, you have been able to help me achieve this goal of being and feeling secured, creating a variety in my life. Sometimes I'm preaching and I'm very serious and yet you laugh. Why are you laughing? That one minute of variety adds spice to the thing. While I'm still serious and shouting here, you are laughing because you are enjoying what I'm saying. Variety. Amazing. The worship team, they come and stand here and it is true that they are singing a song about Jesus, salvation, the cross. And still, they will have to package that song using variety. If they sang what they sang week before last, next week, by the other week they are singing it, even them they will know it's not blessing you again. Even if the whole song is Jesus, Jesus, Lamb of God, you died for me, it will still not bless you because there was no variety in it. Why do you invite so many music ministers when it's the same person they are all talking about? You want them to talk about that person in as many ways. Biologists and nutritionists will tell us that this food has vitamin C, this one has vitamin C, and yet all your body needs is vitamin C. But you will want to carry the various forms of it. You will not eat orange alone all the days of your life. And you want to add something else. Even though what your body needs is just the vitamin C, for instance. You will still want it to come in another expression. Listen to me. Let me repeat something I said. That nothing physical and nothing material in itself can and will ever give you fulfillment. I I assure you on this. It is the reason why we seem to make it and yet become frustrated. You would think a man of God having a large membership and having the power and the anointing of God and a great grace for revelation should never have any concern in his life again. Unfortunately, that is not so. You would think a billionaire and a millionaire should never have any concern in his life again. Unfortunately, that is not so. What seekest? Please look at me. My brother, it is not a car you are looking for. Give yourself rest. It is not twins or triplets you are looking for. Give yourself rest. It is not another job you are really looking for. Give yourself rest. I can tell you, what you are looking for is a craving for security. What you are looking for is a craving for dynamism and variety. What you are looking for is a craving for significance and acknowledgement. What you are looking for is a craving for acceptance and love. What you are looking for is a craving for growth and increase and advancement. What you are looking for is an honest opportunity for your life to at least count. Write this down. All physical things that we seek, all physical things that we seek, are only expressions and conveyors of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing. 
I'll take it again. All physical things that we seek are only expressions and convey us of a deeper spiritual and psychological longing. Through that car, you hope to find something else. Through that marriage, you hope to find something else. Through the increase, you hope to find something else. Through the anointing, you hope to find something else. Through the political position, you hope to find something else. Do you know why I'm helping you? I'm helping you with this teaching so that as you seek to have physical things around you, you will have it at the back of your mind that nothing in itself that I have or ever have will give me what I'm truly looking for. So you can enjoy the physical blessings by having this knowledge that if it is fulfillment I am looking for, these are not the things that will give it to me. That way you can become wealthy and wise. You can become exceptional and wise. Why? Your wisdom comes in knowing that none of these things in themselves can give me fulfillment. Then you start looking for what will really give you security in a deeper way. What will really give you variety in a deeper way? What will really give you acceptance in a deeper way? Look up, please. Can I tell you this? If you don't answer this question and trust God to help you, as a husband, you will find yourself beating your wife every day. And if they ask you, why are you really beating this woman? You will say she does not cook well. If they probe you, you too will say, honestly, I don't know why. I will tell you, you are, you are hurting somebody because of something you are looking for. And because that is the obvious scapegoat around you, you will land it on the person using the guise of any story. Same thing with wife. You can turn and say, my husband is not responsible. And then after you cry and you are done, they say, what are you really looking for? And you say, I don't know. I can tell you what you are looking for. You are looking for what money cannot give. You are looking for what marriage cannot give. You are looking for what employment cannot give. You are looking for what entrepreneurship cannot give. You are looking for what a designer cannot give. You are looking for what travels across the globe cannot give. Genesis 37 and verse 15. Please give it to us. Hmm. And a certain man found you rigmaroling around life and a certain man found you with a pile of enemies on your blacklist and they say what, what is all this about and he said what are you really looking for why do you have enemies everywhere you go from this company you have enemies from that company you have enemies look at the kind of person i am i don't allow anybody to insult me what are you really saying i have a problem and I'm here to deal with it. So the obvious is to blame anybody I can blame. Can I tell you, when you have a problem with too many people, the problem is you. Because you interpret life from the lens of your own limitation. When you have a problem in Lagos, Abuja, London, Kaduna, UK, the problem is you. Nothing physical. I remember a story of a man whose car got burned and the man killed himself. I wonder what you will find out where he will find out how foolish he was by killing himself because the car got burned. Now, I don't mean to insult you. Let me tell you why the man killed himself. Because that car burning seemed to have an impact on his mind based on the awareness that my self-worth is tied to this reality. And now that that car has gone, what will my family people think of me? Can I tell you this? If you understand this message I am teaching you, it will bring you permanent deliverance. You will strive to be successful, but you will know that there is something greater than success. So you will not postpone your joy till the day you build the mansion. You will start rejoicing today. If they ask you why, you will say, I know that even my 10 years 
It's not what will give me joy and fulfillment. No. The narrative that most people have, and I say this respectfully, the narrative that most people have, especially in Africa, unfortunately, is a narrative that has been sold by social media, is that the moment you have money, remember the one million thing I said, God bless you, and you shouted amen. The moment you have money, especially lots of it, your respect, your esteem, Everything you have photos of people with all kinds of priority vehicles there around wearing designers, the latest this, and there is a craving in you. I must get it anyhow. Let me give you an advice before time. There was one who already got it before you. Hear what that person said vanity upon vanity. Now, you have to understand the person who the Bible says was speaking. The Bible did not call him a businessman. The Bible called him a preacher. He's saying where you are hoping to get to, I have already gotten there. I can tell you there is nothing there in itself. This is not a call to a life of mediocrity and carelessness. It would challenge you to aspire to get your dreams and your goals. But let me tell you sincerely, as you seek to become all that God has created you to be, I give you an advice because the world of, a, of the great is very deceptive. They arrive there and then they sit and they check to see if that craving has been satisfied. And they find out painfully that like a drug who, that will satisfy you for a short time and you are back to yourself. That's why they get angry. So all my labor of doing this and building that, I thought it would give me that sense of significance. And yet it does not give you anything. What then satisfies these cravings? If a car cannot really do it, if a house cannot really do it, all of those things carry with themselves little expressions. We, we call them feelings. It's a word that we have invented to help us relate with the kind of energy or that, that sense of pleasantness that is derived as a way of checking one of these six lists. Again, I give you a car key. You rejoice because something comes out from that car. A feeling that I am successful. A feeling that I am not a failure. And when that feeling comes, that's it. One day you will be tired of the same car you once rejoiced about. One day you will be tired of the same phone you are now holding and rejoicing about. One day you will be tired of the same hair you are wearing now that gave you joy. One day you will be tired. Can you imagine? Remember during the inaugural service here in Koinonia. Remember how we rejoice over this beautiful place. The excellence, the ambience. Now we are tired of it and we are trusting God to go to another place. I visited Redeemed and I saw the one kilometer by one kilometer that was built. And I thought to myself, what was in Baba's heart when this came? Then they got fed up and tired of it. Then they moved to three kilometer by three kilometer. Our Father in the Lord, Bishop David Oedipo, they are building the ark now. Remember, for a long time he celebrated the 50,000 capacity seater. And one day, that thing again. He said, let's go for the ark. I can assure you by the God of heaven, if Christ tarries, except age and other things, but if Christ tarries, usually, and every time he blesses people, he will tell you that there is even a greater one coming. Why am I teaching you this? Because I want you to be both successful and fulfilled. Let's define fulfillment again. That it is the satisfaction and the joy that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. I've had the honor and the privilege by the grace of God to be around people who were diagnosed with terminal diseases or people who were they literally knew that they were on their way going. I've had the honor of praying with them. 
I've had some healed miraculously. But in all fairness, there are others that I prayed and I knew that probably these people, their time was up. And at that time, listen carefully, we have to borrow the mindset of a dying man to understand what fulfillment is about. Once you are not a dying man, you cannot really comprehend the wisdom behind seeking fulfillment. You have to borrow the thinking, the last minute of a man who is alive, who is transiting the earth. There is something about that wisdom you must capture. And that is what will help us tonight. What does a dying man look for? Imagine, don't be afraid, just imagine that God told you right now that by 12 midnight today, okay, you will be afraid of going to heaven, but he's coming. In any case, whether you are going or he's coming, you people must meet. Because I don't want you to say I'm confessing negatively, you know, believers, some, the way we think sometimes. But realistically, imagine that the Lord told you today that Joshua Selman, by 11.55, you are going home. Question. I know you have investments around the world. I know you have all kinds of things. I know you plan to travel next week. I know you even plan to do a lot of things there. There's a TV interview somewhere. But what will become your point of focus with that knowledge? Just one information was passed to you. That you have three more hours in this life. And that's it. Three more hours. Wrap up whatever you have to do. You have three hours. No prayer will change it. Three hours. You are not sicko. And it's not going to be accident. It will not be anything. Once it's time. God knows the many ways he will pick you. So that you don't fear. But you just have three hours. Think for a moment. What are you going to do? Remember your, home, your hometown is more than three hours. So don't even think of running there. Think of something wiser that you will do. Three hours. I'm about to share something else with you and then we'll pray. That's why I'm asking you this question. Do you know, I will tell you this. I can give you an idea of what will happen to you. Hmm. In that moment, I give you a guarantee. Nothing else matters. Nothing else counts. I'm in the presence of my maker. Listen, when you are right there, you may think of your businesses, you may think of your investments. You may think of your certificates. You may think of your wife. You may think of your husband. You may think of your parents. You may think of your children. You may think of your future and your goals, your plans, your house under construction. You may think of the person owing you and the police case that is still pending. You will think of all of these things. And yet you will be surprised that none of them at that point will be able to bring you satisfaction. Listen carefully. There is only one thing you will be looking for at that point. When you stand with the consciousness that I have only three hours to live in this life, there is only one thing you will look for. It is called peace. Write it down. Hmm. John fourteen twenty seven. The peace of God. Please write it down. Everybody write it down. Peace when trouble blows. Jehovah sees. Jehovah knows. He is my peace. Jehovah sees. Do you know? Remember, 
three hours to end your life and yet it is not another degree you want it is not another political office you want three hours it is timing by now it will be less than the three hours it is not whether you like it or not non-negotiable three hours then you will now have the wisdom to look for what you would have spent your entire life really looking for the thing you are looking for at the point of death is what you should find first in your life and have the privilege of enjoying it because i will tell you in that security in that variety in that significance in that acceptance in that sense of growth in that sense of achievement all of them are various ways of saying the same thing this is one thing you are looking for peace how come you only find it when you are hours to the end of your life whereas that is really what you need even from the start of your life and can you imagine that it is available even before you find any of these things that you can have it without a car you can have it without a child you can have it without a church and yet we ignore it but when you are about to go when every other thing fades you find out that is the real thing so when i crave for security what i am really looking for is this hmm. when i crave for variety what i'm really looking for is peace when i crave for significance what i'm really looking for is peace when i crave for acceptance running away from trouble what i'm really looking for is peace when i crave for growth what i'm really looking for is peace i know you won't believe it if i tell you the reason why you are running around with your cv is that you are looking for peace you will say apostle you are wrong i'm looking for a job <laughs> you are right in your lifetime but back to my story few minutes to the end of your life you would discover that what you were really looking for was not a job that what you are looking for is not a travel abroad or a second citizenship When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I live my life to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and never after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life john 14 and verse 27 listen to what jesus the wise has to tell you dear one who has been given the gift of life peace i live with you my peace i give to you not as the world giveth give i unto you he said let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid i have given you something the fear that comes as a result of lack of a job 
I don't mean to get you emotional, but everybody who died in the train that was headed to Kaduna, by the time they left Abuja, they had plans. When they woke up that morning, they said, I will return back in the evening. And when I return, honey, I'm rushing down to Kaduna to do something quickly. I just want to check my building. And they did not know that they had three hours left. I know you may not see the wisdom in what I'm teaching you today. I'm not saying you will die. But I'm giving you wisdom that is greater than investment. Wisdom. Can I tell you this? It is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you find a house. It is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you have children. It is a waste of time to suspend your pursuit for peace until you have money. None of those things have the power to give you peace. I can tell you. They may carry with them expressions of conveniences that may minister security, may minister variety, but security, variety, significance, love and acceptance, growth and advancement, impact and contribution as psychological ways of looking for the same thing. Peace. Jesus said, I've given it to you. I don't give you when you finish your degree. I don't give you when you finish your master's. I don't give you when you finish your PhD. I don't give you when you become a professor. I don't give you when you are 60 years. Right where you are, before you even start your journey, you can carry the peace of God. When you find a house, it's just an added advantage, but peace is there. Even if the house goes, your peace remains. As God grants you children, you are celebrating the children and dancing, but not without your peace. Can I tell you, no matter what you lose, you did not lose if what you have left is peace. But no matter what you gain, hear me, you really lost if you lost your peace on the way. Many of you start with that gift of peace. You throw it away to look for a wife. You throw it away to look for a husband. You throw it away to look for a job. You throw it away to look for ministry increase. At the end of it, watch what you have. Children, a name, a private jet, money in your account in various currencies, a political position, titles, qualifications, no peace. Where did you keep it? And you find out that you left it in 1980. You threw it when you began your journey looking for other things. And at the end of your life, you will say, house, give me fulfillment. And house says, not my assignment. Degree, give me fulfillment. It is not my assignment. All of them will say, my assignment is only to give you success. Once we help you to become successful, our mission is finished in your life. What then gives me fulfillment? Peace. Hear me. The only thing that can give you fulfillment in your life is the peace that comes with knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding, it says, shall keep your heart and your minds. When you read the preceding verse, verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Nigeria, please look at me. There is such anxiety right now. I want to make it. I want to make sure that things work. And I assure you by God, God is more interested in your success than you are even interested. The God that we serve is more determined. Except that we have been given a wrong narrative that things give success and they also give fulfillment. I am here to tell you by the authority of scripture and the wisdom of those who have gone before us that the limit of everything you will ever have in your life is the realm of success. When you pass the realm of success, only one thing is qualified to pass with you, your peace. And if you throw it away, looking for the other tokens of success, 
a root shock will be waiting for you at the end where that line is drawn. My peace I give to you. Let me tell you this. And I submit to you by the God of heaven. I thank God for everything that he has done in my life. And I thank God for all of you and our global family who have contributed to helping this life attain some level and some measure of success. But I thank God because I learned early. Ministry is powerful. It reveals Jesus. But on his own, as an art or an occupation, does not give you peace. I can tell you. Traveling around the world, I don't care whether you go with first class, business class, private jet, it will not give you peace. The same weather will shake every plane. It doesn't matter where you are seated. The plane in a, the, the space in a first class, business class, economy, if, if the weather shakes it, the whole plane will shake. If that plane crashes, everybody there will crash. Now I'm tempted to sing it again. There are thrones. There are kingdoms. There are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. One more time. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever to his kingdom. Please write this down. Aside from your relationship with Jesus Christ, aside from your family, and aside from your assignment, nothing else is a do or die affair. Write it down. Aside from your relationship with Jesus, aside from your family, and aside from your assignment, absolutely nothing else. It's a do or die affair. Listen carefully, listen carefully, don't be distracted. Aside from your relationship with Jesus, aside from your family, aside from your assignment, there is absolutely nothing else in this life that is a do or die affair. Why are you allowing the issue of the job to kill you? Are you that cheap to give it the power to kill you? Why are you allowing the fact that you were not recognized in an occasion? This thing happened January until now. You have developed, you are almost sick because your ego was torn. So, those who left, who today have gone to be with the Lord, I imagine them sitting respectfully. Some of them are your loved ones. I don't mean to get you emotional. But when they sat in that train, as it started, they didn't know the clock too started. The same way you are seated here. I'm not trying to be a bearer of bad news. But you are closer today than you were in the morning. I don't care how long the time is. Just know that when you woke up this morning, you are closer to that moment. Believe it, cast it, say in Jesus' name, I don't agree. Save journey. I can assure you by the God of heaven. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, among the many things that you remember, remember, it is minus one day to that moment. So when you are fighting and dragging for your ego, let wisdom stand in between to separate you. And say there is no time for this. Remember what you should not lose. Lose the business but don't lose peace. Lose whatever but don't lose peace. Huh. 
Remember the wisdom of a dying man. Money will not do you much at that time. It does not give fulfillment. So, as you begin your journey and as you explore everything you are trying to explore, look up please. There is a kind of desperation many of you are giving life that will end up hurting you. It's an unnecessary desperation. There are the things that matter. The chiefest among them is peace. Tie it around you. No matter what happens, refuse to let your peace go. And at the end of your life, you will find out that peace brought you houses. You will find out that peace brought you certificates. But you will wave them at the gates of success. And peace will escort you gallantly into the realm where only few ever get to. It's called the realm of fulfillment. You will stand there with joy, knowing you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of the kingdom. And whether he comes to meet you or you go to meet him, you can wave earth goodbye with joy because it's the same peace that goes with you. Jesus said, my peace. Africa, hear me. It may look like we've lost everything. Nigeria, I know the cost of fuel, the cost of diesel. I know that terrorism is everywhere. People have lost their homes. People have loved their loved ones. And if I ask you, what do you have left? I know you will say nothing. Let me show you that in all that you lost, you really did not lose anything. Because there is something Satan wants to take. My message is to help you to protect it with all you've had. I may lose my family members, but I have peace. I may not have gotten the job yet, but I have peace. I may not have had ministry expansion yet, but I have peace. The gifts of the Spirit may not yet be at work in my life as a preacher, but I have peace. Someone shall peace. So listen to me. Psychology and psychologists call it security. And you need to be secured. They call it variety or dynamism. They call it significance, your pedigree. They call it love and acceptance. That, that craving to be handed a right hand of fellowship into circles and spheres. They call it growth and achievement. They call it impact and contribution. The master only calls it one word, peace. So, when God blesses me with a house, or when God blesses me with whatever life can offer, I enjoy it and I thank God for it. But at the back of my mind, I remind myself that none of these things, these things are expressions of the mercy and grace of God, consolations to my effective living, but never the basis for it. That the reason why my life is effective is not because of these things. The reason why my life is effective is that I will at the end of my life have the peace that comes with knowing that I spent my life effectively serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. Listen to me. Someday, very soon or later, you will have the opportunity to stand before the coffin of someone you know, someone related to you, I pray not you, at least not so. But you will have a cause to stand. Every time you stand there, let it remind you of the message of this preacher that money does not give fulfillment. Money can create an environment that gives you efficiency and redeems time. I do not downplay these things. I have taught you and will continue to teach you the principles of the kingdom. But there are many people today who have peace, but no car. They will tell you, I am a failure. They have peace, but no house. They will tell you, I am a failure. They have peace, but they have not gone abroad. They will say, I am a failure. So says the narrative of ignorance people. 
come to the world of wisdom and God tells you no matter what you have if peace is the foundation you have something no matter what you have if you lost your peace on the way you have nothing you will keep submitting your prayer requests even before the end of the service I'm going to pray for you and declare that all the things that need to happen in your life for all these six things to happen will happen and provided you are engaging the word of God remember my teaching last week the power of God and the wisdom of God inevitably you will have results in your life however please hear me I have told you here in Koinonia I stand before the God of heaven and I'm speaking to the whole world and let me tell you sincerely you see this walk, Koinonia, I love you passionately with my heart and for as long as God grants me breath, I will keep driving and driving to give my very best. But apps, I can shut down Koinonia this night if God says so. And believe me, I will go and rest the restfulness of a successful person. Because my success is not derived in these things. Man of God, give yourself rest. This headache and high blood pressure. There are people in their 20s, their high blood pressure is as if they are cooking something inside them and their pressure is rising and going down. You ask them why they say, Kai, life, I must make it. This must make it is killing people. It's good to be excellent, to excel. But let us be careful. This is a word of caution. Of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness to the flesh. Hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. Politicians, if you don't win election, don't kill yourself. I'm saying it in advance. Don't kill yourself. It is not a do or die affair. When politics becomes a do or die affair, you will do demonic things for it. Business people, it's good to prosper. But while you are in that transition building wealth, be patient and find peace. You can still smile even when your account is red. My sister, I know you are still trusting God for the child. Let the naysayers keep saying, are you a man or a woman? Don't mind them. God will soon answer them in grand style. But in the interim, do not starve yourself from sleep and say, oh God, when will you visit me? No. His peace is him with you. He's called the prince of it. Are you learning? Most times people see the enormous work that God is doing. And you know they feel that, ah, Apostle, you must be thinking. Your head is going left, right and center. I said, me? <laughs> you are joking. You don't know me. I'm busy, but I'm not busy doing many things. No. I plan to live a successful and an effective life. Give yourself rest. The real estate company will come, but not by worrying. We're wrapping up. Matthew chapter 6. Only a sure one will reign forever. To your kingdom, there'll be no end. Only a sure one will reign forever. To his kingdom be no end. Let's begin our reading from verse 25. Everybody please pay attention. I'm about to speak over your life. Therefore, I say unto you, believers who love Jesus, take no thought for your life. He's not saying don't be careless. He's not saying don't be intentional. He's not saying be irresponsible. That's not what he's saying. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink or yet for your body what ye shall put on. Look up please. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Next verse. Behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are they not more are ye not much better than they 27 which of you by taking thought look at this now 
The word is worrying. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his business? One cubit. Worry does not add anything. It only takes away everything. Worry is a devourer. It will come and take what is there that you do not know is there. You may not have anything but God has given you health. And if you allow worry, worry will take the health that is remaining. You may not have anything but God has given you quality relationships. Worry will take away the relationships and leave you worse than you are. 28. It says, why worry or take ye thought for the raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, the Bible says, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Next verse. Yet I say unto you that not even Solomon in all his glory is arrayed like one of these. 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 31. Please look up. It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 32. It says, after these things do the Gentiles seek. Remember our teaching now? What are you seeking? The Gentiles seek for these things, because they think in them. This is the reason why most people, even when they find them, they are afraid of their results and they want more. The reason why most people may never be contented in life is because they want more than money. They feel that by the time I have all of it, then I will be satisfied. One billion, they are still looking for it. And it is not that there is an assignment tied to it. Can I tell you, the only thing that should necessitate your continually wanting to attract more money is the building of the Lord's house and kingdom assignment. No matter how greedy you are, if it is for your personal comfort, there is an exact arithmetic limit of money that when you have as a Christian, you can live as lavish as you want to live, you will still not exhaust it. If you want more, kingdom come must be the basis for it. But if it's just to fuel your lust and to try to give you security, you are wasting your time. 33 but seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you please listen to me ladies and gentlemen the lord gave me this word tonight because i believe with all my heart that someone here someone watching you are about to kill yourself you are about to commit suicide because you think you are a failure there are others you are not committing suicide by carrying knife to cut yourself. But your worry is already reducing your lifespan every day. Preacher, don't look at the Joshua Selmans traveling around and every poster carrying their faces and allow the devil lie to you and say you are not doing anything. And you now say, look, why is it that people are not placing a demand on me? And you get into a lot of nonsense that is not in the blueprint of your prophetic destiny. Because you are trying to match up with a narrative that has been given. Can I tell you, after service here, many of you are going to go home. You will see many wonderful people enter their beautiful cars and drive past you. And you may not have a car yet. Or the kind of car you would want to be proud of. Chances are excellent that in the presence of all that, the wonderful cars are passing. You may feel angry and start insulting them. Wicked people, they stole our money. <clears throat> Manage your anger with wisdom. It is not them that is your problem. There is a battle that has no business to do with that car. It is a craving in you to succeed. God already calls you a success. The fact that you can have his peace is is great success so every other thing that comes it should only be an added advantage and not the basis for your joy i can tell you the truth i am more comfortable today than i was 10 years ago than i was 20 years ago but believe me i stand before the god of heaven nothing added to my life today has made me happier 
I know you won't believe it, but it is true. I found out that no matter how many beds I have in my house, all of me only lies down on one side, not even the whole bed. Whether you is rectangular or whatever, it is one side. There will always be an empty side. You sit down on the many chairs you have, no matter your size, it will be one chair at a time. You can't cut one of your legs and put in one jeep, cut one and put in another one. All of you can only enter one. Look at me. No matter how greedy you are, your hand will only hold one spoon at a time. Even if you eat with the serving spoon, it's still one. Counts at one. I will never teach you mediocrity. But again, I love you too much to allow you have a miserable quest for things that will cost you your eternal destiny and will cost you your peace. Anything that wants to take your peace is not worth it. I repeat, anything that wants to bargain with your peace is not worth it. Whether politics, whatever it is, no. Parents, some of you have children that are extremely stubborn and are giving you headache. And right now, your concern is not the rehabilitation of the children. Your concern is your ego and your reputation. So that you are not perceived as having lived a failed life. Can I encourage you by the grace of God? Ignore the naysayers. Find peace. God knows you have done your best as a parent. Even Judas was part of the ones that Jesus walked with. And even Jesus... If you rated him based on Judas, you would say Jesus failed. Some of you here, you've been downsized. You lost your job. When you started this year, God spoke so powerfully about the year. And by now, you've lost your job. You are just sitting down here saying, Apostle, I don't even know. Among the many things you should not tell yourself is never tell yourself you are a failure. Simply because where you get up and go to every six to five decided to send you away. And you carry this treasure that you are called and say you are a failure. Simply because nothing around your life actually makes you a success or a failure. It is a definition of your perception. Especially when it has to do with fulfillment. If we don't teach this, let me tell you, you see this thing called ritual killing? It's only at its infancy. You will start seeing people do unbelievable things because society has defined a narrative. If I am 25 years old and I cannot buy a jeep and stay in a mansion, I'm a failure. If we sell that narrative, let me tell you, the generation coming will surprise us. You will see witchcraft at levels you have never seen before. Because the obsession to show. Preachers, we have to be careful. Respectfully speaking. The reason why you see many people getting under pressure. Especially younger ministers. Going everywhere to receive laying on of hands. Going to go and do all kinds of demonic things. Do you know why? Because we have sold a narrative. If there is a crowd here down to the basement, overflow. There are posters everywhere. There's the protocol walking with you. Apostle Joshua Selman, you are so successful. And a young man will be watching and say, Ah, my life must be like this. I give myself until now to September. And God is saying, Son, you have peace. Be patient, I'm working on you. And you say, No, my colleagues have gone. Be careful with this colleague thing. My colleagues have gone ahead of me. They now have houses. I am here. Your destiny is not the same. God is building and making something out of you. And can I tell you, let me give you a kind advice. If you are part of social media groups that sell some of this nonsense to you and they start torturing your peace, how do you, can you go out of that thing? Go out of it immediately. It's not by force. Give yourself peace. Don't look at your cloth and say, my own cloth is 500 naira. Until I start buying clothes of 1 million. Who, who told you that? Show me the verse and the scripture. Now, again, I will repeat. I'm not teaching you mediocrity. I'm showing you the pathway to genuine fulfillment. Can I tell you? Little with peace is much. 
You don't know the worth of peace until your days are wrapping up. When you are not somebody who has the time limited, you may not see how expensive peace is. I found the reason why I sing. 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 Jesus, 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 the reason. Why I sing Peace is the reason 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 I know the reason why I sing. 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 And I will be still. And know you are God. My soul be still. And know you are God. When the oceans roar and thunder roar, I will soar with you above the cloud. Father, you are King over. I will be still and know you, my God. My soul be still and know you, my God. At the end of your life, there are only two things you will be remembered for. The problems you caused or the ones you solved. Let me repeat it. At the end of your life, there are only two things that you will be remembered for. The problems you caused, the joy you took out of lives, the mockery, the heads of people you joined together, the pain you brought for people, or the fact that you stretched yourself and did your very best. Maybe you did not do everything, but that you did something. I made up my mind, it is not my goal to do everything and solve everybody's problem in this life. That's a futile venture. But I made up my mind that for as long as I have breath, I will do the best that I can. To help anyone and everyone who can experience Jesus in and through my life. I will do my best. As I travel to the nations and do everything I need to do. I do it because I love Jesus. I do it because I love you. However, it is a revelation that I have given myself. That while I do the many things that I do. I will guard the peace of God jealously. It is the one asset I have. Not the building, not the clothes, none of those things. You are going to pray. We have two prayer points this night. And then I make an altar call. The first prayer point, listen carefully. The first prayer point is going to be an answer 
to Genesis 37 15. Wallowing around the field, what seekest thou? I tell you what you are going to tell the Lord you are looking for. Lord, I confess that I need the cars and the houses, I need the promotion, the visas. I confess that I need the political positions. But there is one thing I'm asking you. That above and beyond these things you give me. Let me find fulfillment. Fulfillment is what I am really looking for. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for the grace and the wisdom for fulfillment. More than results. And more than success. Cry from the depth of your heart. Koinonia. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. Please pray. Is someone praying? You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food. That satisfies You are provision for the journey of my life You are everything Keep praying, fulfillment You are everything you are the thirst You are the stream You are the hunger living deep inside of me You are the food That satisfies You are provision for the journey of my life you are everything. Ah. You are everything. You are everything. Pray for fulfillment. At the end of my life, let it not be that I just bought cars. Acquired degrees, gave birth to children, made a name, became a veteran politician, became a veteran in the military, became a respected name, became a great man of God with a great congregation. Now, give me fulfillment, oh God. The gift of fulfillment. Garnish my destiny. Garnish my achievements. Garnish my results and my success with fulfillment. The satisfaction that lives in me knowing that I am and would have lived my life effectively. Serving the purposes of the kingdom and being a blessing to humanity. Don't be tired. Pray. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are Someone pray. Fulfillment, oh God. Save me from the folly of living a profitless life. Just pursuing things at the expense of a fulfilled life. Pursuing names. Pursuing titles. At the expense of my peace. No physical thing. No material thing. 
no matter how great believe me sustain the power to give you fulfillment at best they can be expressions of success around you and they are important and god will give you but none of them can pass the gate of success hallelujah last prayer point last prayer point if all i was talking about was peace then why did i go the route of security and variety and significance and love and acceptance and growth do you know why because even though peace is the highest and the greatest in truth from a psychological standpoint these are the things that must happen to you listen to me many of you are depressed today in your life because you are craving for security many of you are depressed in your life because you are craving for variety many of you you fight with everybody because you are closely guarding your fragile ego you may not admit it but that is the reason why you are enemies to anyone you can't make friends with people for two weeks you must fight because you should call me apostle joshua selman and you said joshua selman do you know who i am i interpret for you what you are looking for you are trying to say it took me a lot to piece together this my ego don't trivialize and deflate it through dishonor love and acceptance there are ladies today respectfully speaking who will say yes to anything and anyone provided they, they get a sense of acceptance whether the man has 30 wives they will say yes provided he will say i love you no there are people who want to grow they will cut corner and corners and do anything our world of fake life and fake living is because people are looking for growth stand behind somebody's car and snap and say it's your car there are drivers that have snapped in front of houses of their bosses i'm not i'm not demeaning what they are doing what i'm saying they just stood there and snapped how many people tell lies respectfully speaking social media people tell lies full of lies and nonsense unnecessary nonsense because most people want to at least feel like they are growing pastors what of the membership we exaggerate you can have members as small as part of this auditorium and say i had fifty thousand people attend the meeting and ten thousand people were healed hundred people got up from the wheelchair and nobody knows the lie is unnecessary it may not be as a result of insincerity but is that passion to show we are growing and finally who does not want his life to count i do you do we all want to know that our lives count you're going to pray and say father everything it makes for these six things to be represented in my life i pray by your mercy make it happen for me please go ahead and pray haven't understood fulfillment then god is not afraid to make you successful go ahead and pray lord all that it takes every physical expression of security of dynamism and variety whatever will help to enhance my sense of significance whatever oh god will help to provide that platform for love and acceptance whatever will enhance my perceiving that i am growing the bible calls it the things that make for life and godliness please pray from your depth the depth of your heart lord do not withhold your hand from making it available for some of you it will mean a new house all the same for some of you it will mean a new job for some of you it will mean a miracle of children for some of you it will mean god granting you access to the nations provided you understand that none of them in themselves give you fulfillment then he can give you the privilege 
of tasting of that which makes for success by every standard everyone that asketh receive it lift your voice and pray now with this understanding you can ask for a house you can ask for a car you can ask for relationships with this understanding you can ask for a political position because your self-worth is not tied to it they are expressions of success but you know that above and beyond them your peace is your greatest asset ask that you will receive so that your joy might be full someone is asking lord do not withhold your hand away from me let me have manifest in my life the things that make for life and godliness financial supplies manifestations of favor open door increases of all kinds in ministry in life in family in business send them oh god speedily to my life hallelujah let me pray for you now you are the thirst you are the stream you are the hunger leaving deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are the first. You are the stream. You are the hunger leaving me inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are every. are everything regardless the houses and the cars you are everything regardless the positions and the titles you are everything regardless the names and the achievements you are everything now listen to me you are standing here. You came to church. You came to receive. And while you heard me preach, especially when I said, if you have three hours to the end of your life, do you have that peace? I believe with all my heart that someone listening to me, whilst I spoke, the Holy Ghost told you He's speaking to you. Listen to this preacher. He's probing into whether you have thrown away your peace or not even received it. Now listen everybody. What I forgot to tell you is that peace is not a thing. Peace is the name of a person. He is Jesus. Peace is more than a feeling. Is the life of God in you. You are here. And you need that peace. Once you heard me teach. You said this is truly why God brought me. For some of you God has been working in you for weeks. Maybe you've thrown away church thing. You are not serious. Remember. I'm not scaring you. But I bring to your remembrance again the three hour talk that there were actual people, not a parable, who left just about two weeks or a week ago and they had plans just like you did. Some of them sadly left without peace. Some of them today are rejoicing in a place so beautiful and great. Some of them are joining the cloud of witnesses as they cheer this preacher speaking. And are saying as you hear his voice. If they had a chance to talk to you. 
they will not tell you hurry up with the investments. If they had a chance to talk to you, some being your loved ones, they will say, listen to this preacher. Behind the foolishness of what he's saying is eternal wisdom. Hear me. The Prince of Peace is calling you tonight. Young, old, rich, poor, male, female. He's calling you and giving you a chance. I know you have a car, but you need peace. I know you have a house. I respect your pedigree and your achievements. You may be inside, you may be outside. Whether you are having this peace for the first time, or you threw it away in pursuit for other things, and you're saying, now I know this asset that the world cannot take. I'm going to count just one, two, three because of our time. I'd like you to come and stand here and let the Prince of Peace reintroduce you to a kind of peace that is greater than everything. I begin my counting. Run. One. Koinoni, are you celebrating them? You are the first. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Sing it one more time. You are everything. You are everything. We have one more minute for you. Come. There's still space for you. Win that war tonight. He will give you houses beyond your imagination. He will give you the things that money can buy beyond your imagination. But above and beyond it, hear me, beloved people. Peace personified calls you. Peace is not a senator. Peace is not a president. Peace is not a bank manager. Peace is not a counselor. Peace is Jesus. He calls you to himself and he gives you himself. Some of you are crying. Please help that woman. Listen to me. I can tell you, when you find peace, there is absolutely nothing that can take away that peace except you let it go. When you have a house plus peace, you have something worth clapping for. When you have a degree plus peace, you have something worth clapping for. When you have children in marriage plus peace, you have something worth clapping for. When you have achievements plus peace. You know why? Because only the achievements can be taken. The peace cannot be taken. Not by any system. Not by any witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen. I salute all of you who are standing here before me. Thank you for your courage. And for those who are following across the globe. You are probably listening in your office. In your home. Or a group. Just listening. And while the Holy Spirit is speaking to these ones, He's also speaking to you. Probably you are listening to the rebroadcast and the Holy Spirit is telling you, listen to this preacher. It is me speaking through him. Do not harden your heart as you hear him speak. It's an opportunity he's given to you to make your ways right. And all the overflows, those who are standing, I want you to know that this is a sincere... Don't just come out and emotionally lift your hands, recite a poem and go back. Guard and treasure these that you find now for the rest of your life. And someday when we stand before Jesus, we will hug and greet one another and say, The house remained on earth, but the peace brought you here. Hmm. The degree remained on earth, but the peace brought you here. If you ever leave this earth safely... There is one lift that takes you. It is not your house. It is not your degrees. It is peace. Lift your right hand high above your head as a symbol of your surrender. And please say this after me as loud as you can and as clear as you can hear me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I acknowledge you as my Prince of Peace. 
You are the peace that I have been looking for. Right now, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I believe that I am your child based on my confession that Jesus is my Savior, my Lord, my King, and indeed my peace. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive this gift of your life. I receive this gift of peace. And I declare that from now till forever, you are my God, you are my peace. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Dear Prince of Peace, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your hand. We thank you for your mighty, the workings of your spirit. You have brought these ones tonight because you are the Prince of Peace. They have heard your word and they have come to receive of that peace that money cannot buy. Jesus, based on their confessions and by the authority of scripture, I declare them recipients of your peace and recipients of the life of God. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that your sins are forgiven and that he gives you a new beginning. There is a restfulness and satisfaction that you have from today that nothing else will ever take in your life. Now, alongside this peace you have received, I pray for you that every other thing you need that makes for life and for godliness, may God who gives all things freely, may he be benevolent even on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and increase you amen and amen please look at me god bless you may i please request that you move towards my right very quickly there is a counselor waving his hands they are waving their hands they will just have a minute with you just give you a gift and some information and then you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go thank you so much the lord bless you the lord bless you the lord bless you koinonia is this the best you can do for them let's celebrate jesus the prince of peace Let's celebrate Jesus, the shalom of God. I'm about to speak over your life and then we're done for this service. Peace, when trouble blows, Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows, He is my peace, when sorrow needs, Jehovah sees. There are two prayers I want to pray for you and then we are done. Number one, as I would always do, is supernatural exemption from calamities. Haven't used different examples about death and the rest. Listen, fear not. There is a covering that can come upon you and keep you secured and immune. First, the blood of Jesus. That blood upon the lintel that the spirit of death and the avenger cannot cross you. Number two is the name of the Lord that is a strong tower. The Bible says the righteous run it into it and they are saved. Are you ready to receive? In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare over your life the waster, the avenger and the spirit of death will never come near your dwelling. Again, I declare the waster, the avenger and the spirit of death will never come near your dwelling in the name of jesus christ and i pray for you all that makes for life and godliness that must be represented in your life in this season as consolations to your christian experience i decree and declare may the god of peace himself the lord of peace who would give you peace by all means May he give you those things richly to enjoy. Yeah. Hear me. Every troubler of your destiny this week, they give up finally over your life. Yeah. Every troubler of your children, troubler of your finances, spiritual or physical, they must give up on you this week. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. 
your going out is blessed your coming in is blessed in the air you are blessed on the road you are blessed by train you are blessed by sea you are blessed the blessing is a garrison over you in the name of jesus christ find favor find increase find liftings find speed find breakthroughs find testimonies find signs and wonders find increase but in all of it find peace in the name of jesus christ find fulfillment that after tonight go back home with joy knowing you have found an answer to genesis 37 15 when life asks you what seekest thou tell life don't be confused by my pursuit for money don't be confused by my pursuit for education all of those things are wonderful they will only give me success but if you want me to answer you answer life tell them I, all that i seek i have found in jesus my peace in the name of jesus christ be blessed and honored above all men and may the peace of god that surpasses all understanding carries in your heart and your mind in the mighty and marvelous name of jesus amen and amen after the grace we're going to share the grace shortly afterwards i want you to greet one another and prophesy to them and tell them jesus is your peace immediately after the grace hug 10 20 people and tell them jesus is your peace now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god even the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever jesus is my peace go ahead and greet someone thank you for staying to the end of this message but before you leave i want to tell you a story there was a father who has two sons and so he sent two of his sons to the farm like to go and harvest yam so he called them both and sent them the elderly one says he is going to go that he is going to like go on the errands but the younger one says he's not going to go and so they left the presence of the man and behold the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said my father has been very responsible for me so i will go so he changed his mind and went so i want to ask among these two sons who actually does the will of the father it is the younger one so as you have listened to this message it's not about listening alone if you're listening and probably you feel stirred up but later on the zeal the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message it means the time that you dedicated listening to them, to this message was a waste so it is not about what you share alone it's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of the, those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around